Good morning, everyone. We will get started. Thanks for your patience. We have a lot of people joining us on this webinar still, so um, just wanted to make sure everybody everybody got on. We had a really good turnout rate, and um, don't want anybody to miss out. So I appreciate your patience. Um, so thanks again for attending today. My name is Kristen Como, and I am a Channel Account Manager here at PTS. And uh, before we dive into the webinar, I just want to uh, quickly update you on a few things. Uh, first thing is we've officially released version 8.1, and it's available now for download uh, at our website at tracerplus.com. And uh, not only can you do more with uh, version 8.1, you can now undo more. Yes, Tracer Plus ha now has an undo button. And we're real excited about that. So uh, please. Take some time to install version 8.1 and uh, let us know what you think. Secondly, our next webinar will be next Wednesday, where we will be demonstrating how to incorporate data calculations and parsing of barcodes with Tracer Plus. Um, these are two real powerful features um, utilized with our software, and uh, that should be a good one, too. And last but not least, you know, uh, as always, like us on Facebook, tweet us on Twitter, and link in. Um, we're always sharing uh, news and, and events and don't want you to miss out. Okay, so we have a lot to cover and uh, we encourage all of you to type in your questions and comments, um, any ones that you may have on the, uh, I think it's the uh, question box on your screen. And we'll try to get to everyone, but if in the event we can't, um, we will see your questions, and then uh, someone will follow up and contact you directly. Make sure you get some answers. Um, for those of you who are new to PTS and our Tracer Plus products, I will start off this webinar by talking about who we are and what we do, and uh, review a few great ways to incorporate mobile printing with Tracer Plus. From there, Artemisa Janis from Zebra. The, uh, she's an inside channel account manager. She'll be providing an overview of the Zebra uh, mobile products. And then for those of you who can't wait to see how to get these printers printing with Tracer Plus, we have our one and only Joe Crable, a Tracer Plus solution architect, who will be demonstrating how to get started. So let's get started. Um, portable technology solutions, often referred to as PTS, are the developers of the Tracer Plus software. Um, it's a mobile application development tool used to quickly create easy to use mobile apps for Windows Mobile and Android devices. Um, often thought of as paper replacement software, Tracer Plus apps are used to collect data electronically and has the ability to print barcode and RFID labels as well as receipts and invoices. Um, also work orders um, in a whole host of other things. With our Tracer Plus Connect software that you can then seamlessly connect that data between devices and existing databases along with Microsoft Excel Sheets. Um, the best part of it is you don't need to be a programmer to do all this. And while our relationship with Zebra spans over 10 years, um, printing is actually one of our most underutilized features in Tracer Plus. And we're hoping today we can uh, reveal some great ways to save money and encourage more of our Tracer Plus users to incorporate printing as a part of their mobile solutions. Okay, so just as Tracer Plus replaces paper-based forms, um, some of the most effective mobile printing solutions uh, do the same thing. Replacing handwritten documents, such as receipts and uh, labels or work orders, provides all Tracer Plus applications the ability to improve your productivity. Um, this will also eliminate errors uh, by being able to print on demand at the exact location and at the exact time that you need them. Um, asset tracking is, is one great way to um, utilize the printing. Um, it will increase your, your efficiency. A lot of times people often fumble, misplace, forget, or even damage um, RFID labels, uh, pre-printed ones, or even worse, put the wrong label on the wrong asset. Um, being able to verify 
uh, then print a barcode or RFID asset tag at the exact time you need it can decrease these errors and save money. When used in conjunction with Tracer Plus field sales and service applications, you can increase productivity. Um, by decreasing the time it takes to manually invoice a customer, you can service more customers per day and increase your billing cycle. You'll also no longer have to take paperwork back to the office for a manual entry, um, which will also save time and eliminate errors. With a Tracer Plus price check app, you can significantly reduce repricing and labeling costs as well as save money by reducing printing errors. Um, reprinting damaged or lost labels on demand when, when you see them um, is a great way to save time and money as well as when you're inventorying items um, and you see something damaged or, or needs to be repriced, uh, you could do that on demand as well. With Tracer Plus shipping and receiving applications, um, you can increase your accuracy when uh, labeling products as they arrive. Um, instead of fumbling through papers and labels to verify what's what, uh, printing them on demand and uh, verifying them is a great way to uh, save money as well. And this will also eliminate future errors as items being picked and packed for shipping. Um, packing slips and shipping labels can also be verified and printed. As, they are, as the items are being packed and shipped. Um, the applications in, in this space is, is uh, endless. And healthcare. Um, I can't think of a more worthy printing application than those within healthcare industry. Uh, protecting patients with a Tracer Plus verification app to then print an on-demand label at the time samples are being drawn, um, I'm sure has saved lives. Um, I, I, sorry, I'm missing a slide here. Um, as, these, as all the examples I've shown you today, um, these, these can be easily adapted when implementing RFID. Um, the Tracer Plus and Zebra RFID mobile printers can not only print barcode labels, but encode them with RFID technology and streamline the benefits of mobility even more. Um, RFID has become a daily part of our business here at PTS, and it's more affordable and accessible than ever before. So if anyone has any questions about uh, utilizing RFID and printing and encoding RFID uh, labels, uh, please let us know. We can certainly help you. So with that, I'd like to now introduce Artemisa Janis, an Inside Channel Account Manager for Zebra. Um, she's been with Zebra for about 10 years and has quickly become an industry expert. And I can tell you from experience, her wealth of knowledge and personal touch has helped me quickly answer questions and provide the right printing solutions every time. So thank you, Artemisa, for joining us today. No problem. Thanks, Kristen. I much appreciate everything. Um, appreciate the chance and opportunity to introduce some of Zebra's uh, mobile printers, uh, for our portfolio for 2014. Um, you guys are great to work with, and I really appreciate the time with everybody. Um, again, as Kristen said, Artemisa Jandis. I've been with Zebra Technologies um, for about 10 years, and um, today we're going to review our uh, mobile printers. Um, the use of mobile printers is a trend we're seeing across several industries. Uh, many companies have adopted mobile printers to supplement or complement their stationary printer operations. The typical stationary printer is designed to produce a higher volume of labels than a mobile printer. Mobile printers are intended to increase operational productivity, efficiency, and accuracy by taking the printer to the point of label application. Consider the time that it takes to take a worker to go back and forth to a stationary printer. Zebra mobile printers um, can print from one inch to four inches wide, and some of our printers are geared more towards labels and others receipts. Uh, with a wide range of connectivity options. Uh, next page. First, we'll go over our label printers. Uh, the QLN small design makes it easy to carry and store. It has a standard USB and serial port with Bluetooth and wireless options. Um, the QLN series mobile printers feature the latest technology, including Link OS, making them easy to integrate, manage, and maintain from a PC smartphone, or tablet from anywhere around the globe. The QLNs are compatible with iOS, 
Windows and Android operating systems and have an NFC tag that contains printer-specific information, um, Bluetooth, Ethernet MAC address, a serial number. Um, you have the option of adding your additional information and the ability to touch and pair to Android devices with Print Touch. Some of the feedback uh, that we've received in the past, um, because this is, I believe, our fourth generation QLs, was our customers saying, you know, help us lower operational costs, make the printers easier to manage. With the new generation of QLs, we introduced a new way to make it easy to manage the printer with a remote, unattended Ethernet cradle. The printer can be placed in the cradle and get charged while IT upgrades the firmware, um, fixes or diagnoses any issues, sends fonts, formats, whatever needs to get done. And we also introduced a smart battery on the printer, which allows proactive maintenance. The battery's health being available via display or over the network. It eliminates the guesswork on how much life is left on your battery before it needs to be replaced. We offer a variety of accessories for these printers, um, from cases and stands to forklift mounts and battery eliminators. Next page. Next, as Krista mentioned, is our RFID printer. Um, we have the uh, thermal transfer mobile printer, the P4T, with the optional RFID, the RP4T. The P4T enables you um, to print complex, long-lasting barcode and RFID labels and documents up to four inches wide. And um, it can you know, also include a harsh outdoor environment, so you need that thermal transfer label, that synthetic label for outdoor applications. The P4T is easy to carry with the shoulder strap as a standard feature. And it has a smart ribbon cartridge that has the ability to auto-adjust the darkness for optimal print quality. Automatically adjust the direct thermal mode if the cartridge is not directed, is not detected. So again, th this printer can do direct thermal and thermal transfer printing. Um, and the printer knows what kind of ribbon is being used, again, to auto-adjust your darkness setting and get that optimal print quality. And the printer is RFID ready out of the box. So if you aren't ready to implement RFID at this time, um, you can easily upgrade in the future by sending the printer back to Zebra. We can upgrade with the RFID module, and you'll, you'll receive an RFID-enabled printer. Next slide. And as Krista mentioned, these are just some of the applications. And first, we'll go over the direct thermal mobile um, applications where, again, as she mentioned, um, some of these might be in healthcare for specimen and pharmacy labels. Um, you know, you can do at, at the bedside where if you need to, you know, scan the, the patient's wristband and then be able to print out a label to um, label their specimen collection so you're not labeling the wrong patient's information on something else. Um, in manufacturing for shipping and receiving and asset management, um, transportation and logistics for pick, pack, and apply, um, shipping and receiving in retail, um, distribution centers, in-store shelf labeling, and markdown. Make it easy um, for that employee as they're walking around to mark down products. Next slide. And then this is um, just another snapshot of for RFID and thermal transfer. Um, again, you know, if you need that long-lasting label for extreme conditions for outdoor use, um, and if you need RFID, I, you know, with the Department of, um, for the DOD, uh, if you need a compliance, if you need inventory tracking, or for healthcare, again, specimen collection, or in the lab, for field service, um, labeling outdoor utilities, or provide a receipt for labor or parts, and for vending machines. Again, if you need a label to withstand outdoor extreme um, environment. Next slide. And next is our receipt printer family. As I mentioned, some of our mobile printers were geared towards labels and some are towards receipts. Um, our label printers can do receipt printing as well. And our receipt uh, mobile printers, um, some are a little trickier. So we definitely try and you know ask uh, up front if they're going to be more uh, label or receipt printing. Um, the first one is our IMD. It's a lightweight, compact mobile printer that makes it easy for simple transactions with on-demand receipt and invoice printing. The IMZ is um, for light duty cycles, simple printing applications, very lightweight and ideal for someone who will be wearing the printer for an extended period or for customer-facing environments. Compatible with iOS, Android, and Windows operating systems, it offers the latest technology in a small and portable size with affordable pricing. 
in the EM222, uh, small enough to fit in your pocket, effortless to wear or carry, especially during extended periods of time. Uh, the optional magnetic card reader enables users to accept credit cards at the point of service within the customer site, also compatible with iOS, Android, and Windows. Uh, very cost effective, a good printer for restaurants, table side receipts, uh, courier proof of delivery, or train and bus tickets. Next slide. And these are just some uh, additional mobile receipt applications uh, for field service, in-home service, uh, utility meter reading, mobile workforce, proof of delivery, field service repair, um, for route drivers, for beer, snacks, and groceries, bakeries. Um, a mobile point of sale, as we mentioned, restaurants, line busing, airport duty, stadium sales, um, travel and transportation for public and taxi services, um, government, meter reading, utilities management, just, just so many different applications, so many environments where you can place a mobile product. Next slide. And this is our rugged receipt printer. Uh, we offer a 2-inch and a 4-inch RW or Road Warrior printer designed for outside the four-wall application. It's IP54 rated for resistance against rain, dust, uh, with the standard serial and USB port with the optional wireless and Bluetooth. Uh, we offer a full variety of accessories for the RW, including the route palette and print station that allow you to carry your printer and Motorola device all in one. Because most of the applications for the RW require being outdoors. We offer cigarette lighter chargers, truck and car mount kits to keep your printer fully charged when you're on the road. Next slide. And then again, these are just some rugged receipt applications um, where you may be able to place the RW. Uh, direct store delivery for beverage companies, food snacks, and uh, dairy bakeries. Um, field service, housewares and appliances, repairs, citations, um, cities, universities, meters, police, quad cars, to be able to give you that quick ticket. <laughs> and of course, if anybody's rented a car, you may have noticed the car rental employee will often provide you with the receipt once you return your car using their mobile printer, which makes it easy and quick since we're often in a hurry to catch our flight. Um, with that, I wanted to thank everyone for your time. Um, I'll be on the call at the end for Q&As. If anyone has any questions, feel free to ask or also reach out to your Zebra reseller with any questions. Thank you. Thanks, Artemisa. That was great. Thank you. OK, now for the finale. With over 10 years of mobile experience and over 800 plus Tracer Plus apps created, Joe Crable, one of our solution architects, will now demonstrate how it's done. Hello, everyone. Uh, thanks for joining us today. Um, once again, I'll just mention um, after this demonstration, we'll be addressing questions. Uh, so if you do have any, please type them into your question panel. Uh, so I'm just going to exit our presentation here and get started. Uh, so Tracer Plus enables you to customize a report to print to your Zebra mobile printers. Um, we follow a certain format, um, and it's something called an RPT file. Uh, where well, you're basically just going to input your Zebra code uh, into the various tags available um, to basically design the layout of your, your print. Um, so I'm going to show you how you would actually add a report to an existing application. So if I launch our Tracer Plus desktop app, and as Kristen mentioned at the beginning, um, we officially have released 8.1, uh, so that's what I'm using today. Uh, so what I will do is go to our solution center here, and let's say I wanted to grab an asset tracking app. Uh, so let's say we're doing some IT asset management, so I'll grab this app here. And as we're scanning assets, maybe we want to print out labels and apply them to the actual asset. So now that I've imported our uh, pre-configured project here, uh, we can just take a look at the form. Uh, so you'll notice that in the actual session area, um, where the field settings, you have your, your form designer, you also have a printing area. So in order to enable printing, you just simply click this enable printing option. You can then select the report that you designed. Um, I believe we have a few available online in our knowledge base, which I'll actually show you 
during this webinar, but you can select your report here. Um, so let's say asset QL. Uh, so that's an asset report we have, or a label we have designed for the QL series of printers uh, utilizing the Zebra CPCL command language. So after you select your report, you can choose what you want to print. Uh, so depending on what you're printing, uh, in the case of a label, it's, it's mostly going to be a current record. Um, but you also have an all records option as well as a prompt for filter. Um, so if you actually wanted to print out a or all labels from a list of assets, you could do that with that all records option. Uh, but keep in mind that can also be changed at the time of print. Uh, so this is more of a default setting for uh, what you want it to look like when you actually do the print. We have a few other options here, one being a start print automatically. Uh, with this enabled, uh, it's going to bypass the ability to modify either the, the print what option that I talked about before, or uh, you can actually choose a different report to print at the time of print. Um, so with this start print automatically enabled, that will actually bypass all that, um, which is useful if you are just you know, scanning and printing a label. You don't want any user interaction on the device. Um, so that's also where this print on submit would tie in. So this would enable you to scan a, um, scan a barcode or something into a field, hit the enter key, that'll auto submit the record and automatically spit out a label uh, without any other user interaction. And uh, another setting for the print on submit is how you want it to filter that. Uh, so you could actually have a checkbox in the form. Uh, so basically it could be a print label checkbox. So if it's set to true, then it would print that on submit. If it were set to false, then it wouldn't print a label on submit. So that's what that filter uh, for the print on submit option will do for you. And the last setting for our print settings is the connection. Uh, so we support Bluetooth, TCP IP, or a cabled connection. Uh, with the most common being Bluetooth. Uh, so what you can do first is select your printer. Uh, this is just a default list that we provide to you, but if you don't see your printer, you can just select the generic text only. Um, this will just provide a, a preset list of some parameters here based on the printer selected. So if I select the QL, you'll see some of the options down here. And if I were to select the text, you'll see that some of those options would actually change um, based on the printer you select. But keep in mind, you can really select any one of these printers and then manually set some of these uh, uh, settings down below here. So if I wanted to print via Bluetooth to a QL printer, I'd select my QL series. Um, so this is one, one thing to note. Um, with Windows Mobile devices, um, for Bluetooth printing, it uses COM emulation. Uh, so you will be using the RS-232 option for Windows Mobile and CE Bluetooth printing. And then you're going to select the port here um, of the actual connection that you make, which I'll show a little bit later. Um, if you wanted to print Bluetooth with Android, you would select this Bluetooth option. Uh, you'll see we actually have some validation built into desktop. Uh, so if you're in a Windows Mobile mode, it won't let you select that Bluetooth option. Or actually, it will let you select it, but it gives you a warning that it's not going to work. Um, so with Android, you select Bluetooth, and you would just simply enter the pair name uh, from your Android to printer Bluetooth pairing. And the other option is the TCP IP. Uh, so if your printer's on a wireless network or on your network anywhere, you can actually enter the IP address of the printer and the port that it's connecting on. Uh, depending on the printer, that could be 6101, I, I believe 9101 uh, is another default port. Uh, but if you set those two IP, uh, the IP address and port, that will allow you to print uh, to that uh, printer over the network. So once you've configured all that, you would just simply deploy to your device. Uh, so I actually have a Windows Mobile device um, connected here. So I'm just going to select my 
RS-232 option. And if I were just to push this out to my device, And I also have a printer here that I'm going to turn on, and I'll show you the actual pairing process of uh, a Bluetooth printer. Okay, so now that that project's deployed, it's loading on our device. So I'm just going to exit, and if we go, uh, this, the Bluetooth settings are going to vary per device. Uh, I'm actually using an MC55 here. So if I go to Start Settings, Connections, and then there's a Bluetooth option, I just click the Add New Device, and that should start searching out some devices. Now this, this will not only pick up printers, but any Bluetooth device that you have uh, in the area and that is visible for pairing. So here's our two printers. Let's say if I were to click the QL220, you'll see that it has a serial port option. Um, you don't actually have to check that, but if we jump over to COM ports, uh, you'll see that each printer that would be paired, um, you could set up a new outgoing port for it, um, or existing ports that you've actually configured will also show up in this list. So I can edit it, and you can actually choose a com, you know, whatever COM port you want, uh, depending on what the device will let you. Some of these COM ports are actually in use by the device, so if you do try to select it, it'll warn you that you can't use it. Uh, so usually a common one to use is either COM7 or COM9. Um, so we're set for COM9, and you'll see that uh, what I mentioned in desktop before, this port option is what you would set that, uh, that COM port to. So now this would print to our QL220 calling out port 9, so that's how it would know to talk to that specific printer. So now I want to talk about the actual print dialog on the device. All right, once Tracer Plus is loaded, uh, like I mentioned, you can print from the entry screen via file print. So here's what you can select before printing the label when the start print automatically is not enabled. Uh, you can actually choose a different report to print. Uh, so based on an item type, maybe you want to print a different label. Uh, so you could choose that at the time of print. You can also choose the record you want to print, whether it be the current record, all records, or you can actually print based on a filter, uh, maybe where location equals, um, so if we actually select something, or scan type, um, this drop-down would actually be populated with data if you had it on the device. Um, and you can select to print maybe labels where only the scan type was an asset audit, or a, maybe in a new era, asset issue, maybe. Uh, so after selecting all that, you would simply click this print button, and then it would spit out the label. You can also print from the data entry screen uh, via the same file print option. So you could simply select a, an individual row in the grid, hit file print, or once again, you have those same options available where you can choose the report to print, whether you want to print all records, current record, or if you want to print based on a filter. So let's say I wanted to do, uh, in our asset list, this is where we would add a new asset. Uh, so maybe when we add a new asset, we want to spit out a label. So what I'll do is add a, another field to our asset list session. So I'll jump over to a desktop and our asset list. I'll add a field called print, in which I will default to true. And then if we jump, jump over to the printer, we'll enable that, select our report. In this case, we do want to start the print automatically and also print on submit. So we're going to print 
uh, when field print equals true. Once again, we'll select our QL series, and then we have our Bluetooth connection type of RS-232 with port 9, and then we'll just deploy that over to our device. And we actually do have some samples available um, in our knowledge base. Um, we're going to try to build that up a little bit more uh, to make it easier for users to get started with printing. Because um, it does require some knowledge of ZPL code, whether that be CPCL or ZPL. Uh, so I'll actually show you an area in our knowledge base where you can gain more information on that. Uh, so now if we go to our asset list, so let's say I were to scan an asset tag, I'll just type it in since we're cradled here. So yes, we'll create a new record. At that point, you could scan the serial number. You could select an equipment type. Let's say it's a PC and it's a workstation. Manufacturer, a Dell. Uh, model number, let's say it's an... XPS 1000 or a ZPS 1000. And then we can add a location of where it is. Maybe we're just adding it to stock right now. And the item condition will be new. And if we had any comments. But as soon as I hit submit, that's going <coughs> to excuse me, pop up our print dialog automatically. Um, without any user interaction, it's going to spit out that label and return us uh, to our asset tag field, allowing us to scan the next asset. So that's, that's pretty much how easy it is to add a, a label format to your existing Tracer Plus project. Uh, so now what I want to jump over to is our knowledge base. Uh, so if you go to tracerplus.com, hover over our support menu and knowledge base, we have a category dedicated to mobile printing with Tracer Plus. So this is where you can find a lot of good resources on how to get started printing with Tracer Plus. Uh, we even have some connection videos on how to configure a Bluetooth pairing like I was showing you before. Um, so this will show you uh, different devices. These are actually videos, uh, no sound, but actually show you the pairing process of pairing to a Bluetooth printer. Uh, we have the same for a Janum device here. And then we also have some reference guides. Um, so we have some Zebra guides here, our Zebra CPL programming guide, as well as our ZPL and RFID. Uh, so this is a good resource for designing RFID formats. And of course, ZPL2. Uh, this is the most commonly used language uh, with by Zebra printers. Uh, so here's two reference guides on that particular language. Now, we also have our Tracer Plus print uh, user guide. So if I were to just open that uh, quickly, this shows you the layout of an actual report file. Um, so this will, if I scroll down a little bit, it kind of explains the different tags that we have. Uh, it's, it's designed in an XML type format. So it'll, um, give you more information on what should go on what tags and how everything works. Uh, next category we have here, uh, we do have some samples like I mentioned. Uh, so here's some sample RPT files for the ZPL2 command language. Um, so we have one that prints a QR code from field one. So if you wanted to download this, uh, you could right click and hit the save link as or um, you can actually click on it, and it'll show you the, the actual contents of the report. Uh, so you could copy this and paste it into your own report file. Uh, but you'll see that um, these tags here are our Tracer Plus uh, generated tags. And then within those tags are the Zebra code, uh, this being ZPL. Those of you who are familiar with ZPL uh, will understand this better than someone who is not. But once again, you can simply download this, hook it up to one of your projects, and print a QR code from data entered in field one. 
We have something similar for an RFID tag. Uh, so this, this format is used to print RFID tag information from field one to the EPC bank and then also print information from field two to the user bank of a tag. So that could be particular, uh, particularly useful for an asset situation where picture scanning an asset barcode, it looks up maybe a brief description of the item, and then automatically will spit out an RFID tag with that tag ID encoded as the EPC, and that short description encoded to the uh, tag user bank. Uh, so that's a nice solution where you can just download this format and hook it right up to one of your Tracer Plus projects uh, and print with the RP14. Oops, didn't mean to close that actually. Uh, we also have some, I believe we have some CPCL formats here. So here are an asset label report file and then what it actually looks like. So this code here is actually going to spit out a label that looks like this. Uh, so that, once again, that format is available to you to download and use in your own project. And we have the same for a, re a receipt printout. So you'll see this, this printout here was derived from this particular receipt print format. Um, so you can take this, modify it on your own, use it as is, and you'll get a receipt that looks like this that actually does totaling for you with the number of items as well as an order total. Uh, so if you do have any ideas of things that you may want us to add as far as uh, sample print formats or something you're looking to do, feel free to give us a shout. Uh, we'd, we'd be happy to hear what you're looking to do with printing. But that's basically all I wanted to show today. Um, keep on the lookout for a more in-depth webinar on actual printing with Tracer Plus, um, where we'll actually dive into more detail um, of the, the actual report formats themselves, and we'll actually do some printing um, during the webinar. So keep an eye out for that. Uh, but I hope everyone got um, what they expected out of this webinar today. I want to thank everyone for joining us. Jump back over to our PowerPoint here. All right. Thanks, Joe. Um, before we begin answering questions, as I'm sure some of you will be jumping off, I just wanted to thank Artemisa and Joe for taking the time to present today. Um, we will be uh, recording this webinar and uh, posting it on our YouTube channel. So um, be sure to log on to our uh, YouTube channel and review any highlights that uh, you want to. I want to thank everyone for joining us today, and uh, thank you, Artemisa. Thank you guys so much. Appreciate it. Thanks, everyone, again. And, uh, of course, if you have any questions, you can always reach out to your uh, PTS uh, account manager, and uh, we'll be following up with everybody in attendance today. Thanks, and have a great day. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.